Ethereum research and development firm Nil Foundation says its new Ethereum rollup will be the first ZK rollup that enables sharding. Joining us now is CEO and co-founder of Nil Foundation, Misha Komarov. Welcome to the show, Misha. Hey, it's like thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Now, let's talk about this. It combines zero knowledge proofs and sharding. Explain what this problem solves. And just, I want to put something into context here. Of course, developers watch our show, but we have a very broad audience. So talk to us about what this problem solves and how that relates to de developers, but also uh, other folks who are operating in this space. Okay, let's go into it. So basically, it's like, what's the basic idea of this thing? The basic idea of this thing is to try to solve, uh, is to try to break the walled gardens of all the variety of like different roll-ups, uh, which uh, have, uh, which, you know, which, which, you know, were brought up to life, which, which were, uh, it's like in the recent years. So basically, right now we have a lot of Ethereum roll-ups. They are all, you know, like completely isolated from each other. And uh, it's good if people, you know, it's good if people consider some particular one, like, you know, a good one, like a worthwhile one. And it's like absolutely, it's, it's absolutely tremendous that there are like, you know, whole ecosystems growing on top of them. But like in the, in the end of the day, there is a lot of them, they are isolated. And we try to, we try to solve this issue, this modularity issue, this uh, you know, walled gardens issue by basically bringing what Ethereum, uh, you know, what what was in Ethereum, what, what was in Ethereum roadmap initially, uh, like you know, long promise sharding. We tried to bring it as a zk rollup thing, which you know basically solves uh, like which basically solves the modularity concept and you know, yeah, modularity concept drawbacks. That's what okay, it's so about. All right, let, let's take it a, another step further because I. I, I explain why that is an why that's an issue uh, for for the lay for the lay person out there watching this. Mm -hmm. Okay, why this is an issue? So basically, it's like the more the more liquidity fragmentation, the more security fragmentation you have. Basically, what was like okay, what what the hell is a modular concept, right? It's basically that you have one application, one rollup. That's what it is, and it's a good idea. But the problem is that uh, how much of liquidity can the one can, can a single one application attract, and what if other applications can also make use of it by basically like increasing the total the total good of this liquidity, the total outcome of this liquidity from this liquidity. So this means that one application, one rollup is it so might be you know not the best idea. Okay, so we try to we try to solve this issue so the liquidity and the security could stay unified. Because, for example, for lending protocols or like, I don't know, for uh, you know, swaps, like different kind of swaps, uh, it's like it's very important to keep the liquidity pools as deep as possible, to keep the lending pools as you know, large as possible, because that's what defines their economic viability for the user. So that's what it is. We try to solve this issue is keeping liquidity unified. What's the difference, um, I guess, from a developer's perspective, if we build on nil or another roll up like Polygon, ZK EVM, or ZK Sync, or are they all kind of similar? Uh, it's like let's say it this way. Um, it's like um, it's like we target. It's like we target those kind of applications. Those kind of applications, which first of all, uh, you know, very sensitive to liquidity fragmentation. So there wouldn't be a requirement for them to keep, uh, you know, to keep their, to, 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 to keep their liquidity, you know, split. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, we target those kind of applications which are, you know, high load applications. So, so, something like, you know, it's pretty obvious for everybody right now that, you know, high load applications, I don't know, uh, autonomous worlds, okay, autonomous actors, Vitalik uh, likes to talk about that much, or like, I don't know, this kind of things, sequencers, uh, builders, decentralized uh, PBS, all of these things are not possible to be built, you know, on Ethereum because of the way it is built. And that's the same thing, it's not possible to be, these kind of things are not possible to be built on top of traditional rollups. So there are, there are intersections, with traditional rollups, of course, but there are parts of, you know, there are parts and segments of applications which are only possible on Nell. So we try to cover, we try to cover, you know, these two parts of markets. 
You mentioned high load and data intensive applications here. What kind of apps do you think will thrive most in this ecosystem? You mentioned autonomous worlds, but what do you envision? Uh, what kind of apps living here? Well, first of all, it's like first, it's like it's like first kind of apps. Which first kind of apps? Which which I'm personally going to push forward is going to be first of all sequencers and. Uh, well, let's say this way. I mean, obviously, obvious, obviously, financial applications and things like this. But besides that, it's sequencers. It's anything related to building and minimizing the EMV for for the for the user in a decentralized and like you know open way. Uh, that's what I see. Like you know, right now, that's what I'm going to target. Like right now, like just I'm I'm going to push for it. Okay. And uh, obviously, if we're talking about like a long, more long term vision. Uh, I do support the vision that you know I will try to put shared state applications on top of this because that's what you know all of those autonomous worlds and autonomous actors are about. I mean, it's like that would be really fun to put up some you know autonomous actor to make it smarter than just you know trivial than, than just trivial like perceptron or something. So yeah. So I, you, you mentioned uh, financial applications. So for, for people in the financial service industry who might be watching this and, and don't quite understand exactly what this conversation is about, can you lay it out for them? Explain to them how this, it, how this would affect them. Okay. So basically uh, how this particular architecture, how this particular approach affects uh, financial applications, okay? Let's just take a look at, I don't know, lending protocols or like different swaps. So let's say you have, uh, let's say you have some, I don't know, Uniswap or something. And uh, let's say a liquidity in a particular pool on Ethereum is quite deep enough, okay? But it's expensive to use it for, uh, it's like in case you need to swap something often. I mean, really expensive to use it, okay? So what's the, what's, the, what's the traditional solution? The traditional solution is you deploy the Uniswap to like, you know, some roll-up. You pay less for the gas fees. You can do it more often. But here's a little bit of a nuance. Uh, it's like the liquidity pool on the roll-up is, you know, much smaller than on the Ethereum originally. And uh, no matter how hard you try, it would be really hard for you to, you know, for you to put that liquidity from Ethereum to some rollup and to make a rollup's liquidity pool deeper than Ethereum's one. So that what the liquidity fragmentation does to, you know, this kind of exchanges, this kind of exchange applications. So that's what it is. And obviously the deeper the liquidity pool is, the it's like the smaller uh, basically this, this it's, it's, like, it's like the smaller um, the smaller kind of okay well basically the deeper the, the deeper liquidity pool is the more you can exchange it okay that's like you know talking in basic terms so that's what it is it's like the less slippage is okay so that's why this is important this is that's why the absence of liquidity fragmentation is important to financial applications like on the example of a uniswap for example so basically it's all about making basically it's all about increasing the efficiency of those yeah all right, Misha, we got to leave it there. But very quickly before we go, I wanted to see if you have any comment about the news that came out on Kraken this week. It said that they're seeking a partner to help build their layer two. And according to people familiar with the situation, the Nil Foundation is one of the partners they're considering. Any comments on that? I knew this question would, would arise. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing, uh, I would say it's too early to say something or not to say at all. It's like, so uh, let's, you know, let's just live it there. Let's just live it there. I can't state anything about this currently. All right, Misha, thank you for that. It was a pleasure and congratulations on um, the upcoming launch. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That was the CEO and co-founder of Nil Foundation, Misha Komarov. And make sure you sign up for Coindesk Protocol newsletter, which explores the tech behind crypto one block at a time. You can find that at coindesk.com slash newsletters.